Since the dawn of human existence, where there is a body of water, there is a story of a creature hiding within it. Is it the power of imagination, something in the way people are built, or is it that water is the great darkness concealing animal life we have yet to witness or understand? Lake Erie, miles and miles of fresh water in America's Midwestern heartland. For more than 200 years, there have been eyewitness accounts of a 30 to 50 foot creature, a serpent, a monster lurking in these waters. Could it be possible? Is it true? We are here to find out. This is The Quest for Bessie. My name is Mike Patrone, and six years ago, while vacationing with my family at a beach house in Vermilion, Ohio, I saw something in the water that I couldn't explain. Something that looked massive and alive and had no business being at a freshwater lake. Since then, I've been studying Bessie, the Lake Erie monster, and now I'm ready to begin my own quest to find her. The first acknowledged eyewitness account of the Lake Erie monster dates all the way back to 1793. The captain of the sloop, Felicity, was hunting ducks near Sandusky, Ohio, when he reportedly startled a large serpent-like creature with a snake head that he claims was more than a rod in length, that's 16 and a half feet. 24 years later, in 1817, there were a flurry of Lake Erie monster sightings, in some cases reported by an entire ship's crew and claiming it to be an incredible 60 feet in length. Like its Scottish counterpart, the Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie, the Lake Erie Monster, or Bessie, is what is commonly referred to as a cryptid. What is a cryptid, you may ask? Consult a young person. So a cryptid is a cryptozoological creature whose existence is like disputed or unbelieved in popular culture. So like Mothman or Bigfoot. Since its first sighting, there have been countless theories about the Lake Erie monster and what it might actually be. Probably the most popular theory being that it is a large sturgeon. Going back to the turn of the last century, there was a tremendous population of sturgeon in Lake Erie, but the fishing industry pretty much wiped them out by about 75 years ago. So while a 20-foot one of these in the water might look like a monster, it wouldn't really explain the rash of sightings in more recent years where sturgeon have become extremely rare. My plan for the day is to go back out to the beach house in Vermilion where I first encountered the Lake Erie monster. I'm hoping to do a little reconnaissance. And who knows, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll find out it's still there. When I was six years old, my grandfather took me fishing in Canada. Uh, he had this lake that he went to every year up north in Canada, and he told me he wanted me to learn how to catch a big fish. This was, a, this was a big lake and it was pretty remote and 50 years ago it had not been well fished. Uh, so there was some really big fish in this lake and all the guys in the camp, all the fishermen, the old salty fishermen, uh, they talked about this one fish, Pocono. This big giant muskie, a giant muskie that no one had ever caught. They, everybody had hooked it but never caught it. Anyway. Uh, Pocono lived by this rock that was by a cliff, maybe 50 yards from a cliff, and uh, everybody knew that that's where this fish was always hanging out. So, first couple of days, my grandfather, we we uh, we looked for smaller fish. We we're catching bass and stuff, but then he took me out 
to Pocono's lair. And for like an hour, we were throwing lures against that rock. And now he took me out at night, and all we had was a lantern. And it was you know, dark, and just this lantern. We're throwing these lures, and then bam, it hit. And I hooked the, uh, the Pocono, and I'm holding on for dear life. It's probably twice my weight. And all of a sudden, that fish jumped right over the bow of the boat scared the pants off me. I dropped that reel. I, I didn't want to have anything to do with it ever again. So as I travel to Vermilion tonight, I'm thinking about Pocono and my grandfather and the Lake Erie monster and how this might be my chance to redeem myself and catch that really big fish. It's a perfect night on the lake. Perfect conditions. I'm hoping... Um, that it won't be long before uh, it gets dark and I can hopefully maybe find some footage or actually have an experience again myself with the monster. So it's getting dark and um, I'm just about where I need to be. I don't know if you can see there's some lightning in the background. I don't know if I'm going to get rained on. I don't know if that's going to help the situation maybe bring out the monster. I don't know if it likes to come out in the rain or not. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just heard some thunder. Um, it's getting a little lippy out here, so uh, we'll see what happens. You know, you realize when you're out here alone that there's things you need to remember and find. Uh-huh. Got it. Holy crap! Did you... Did you, you heard that. <laughs> I heard that. Oh! So... Not only is there a storm coming, as you'll probably see the lightning in a second, but something just hit, sorry, something just hit the boat. And I'm trying to get a better look at what the heck it was. And I, but I know, I don't know if you can see those clouds, there's definitely uh, lightning in the distance. So I know I don't have a lot of time, I've got to get in. But I know that something pretty, recently just hit this, this, something hit my boat, there's no question about it. Um, I saw something in the water, fortunately, as you might be able to see, again, there was lightning in the distance, I don't know what the heck was going on, um, and I, I just started to try moving in, uh, because clearly there's a storm coming, and uh, I wish I could get back there and see it again, but I guess I'm going to have to wait for another day. Uh, because it doesn't look like, well, it looks like I'm going to have to really get out of here. Heading in, I beat the storm, um, but for sure I'm heading back out there because I know for a fact something is there. Now I've seen it and I've encountered it and I'm going to find it. Today, I'm visiting the home of expert diver and Lake Erie historian, Mike Gowan. If I'm going to track down and catch the Lake Erie monster, I will need eyes not only above the water, but below it as well. And Mike Gowan literally spends his summers submersed in the deep. He knows the bottom of Lake Erie as well as anyone, and that makes him a potentially invaluable asset. 
I've got my fingers crossed that I can convince him to join the team. Does this involve you throwing me off of a boat in Lake Erie a few times? <laughs> yeah, probably so. Then I'm in. And it probably it involves you being at the bottom of Lake Erie. That's where I'd love Lake. to be. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a skeptic, but anything that involves me jumping around in the lake and searching and exploring, you know, that's, that's fun for me. That's what I live for. So um, I'm in. The Quest for Bessie is a video chronicle of our pursuit of the Lake Erie monster. We go through all the history, everything. We check out all the clues. Um, we leave no stone unturned, look under every rock, right? And we bring it back dead or alive. Okay. That's a tank banger. What does that mean? So there's a tank right behind you. Bang that thing on the tank. Underwater, that sound really carries. And if you're trying to get your dive buddy's attention, you reach behind you with the butt of the knife and bang the tank, and then they'll, they'll kind of know that something's going on. Mike is the real deal. He's made hundreds of dives to the bottom of Lake Erie, and there are probably very few people that know more about what lies at the bottom of it than he does. If you're an amateur like me, plunging into the depths of a lake searching for a 30-foot sea creature, you definitely want an experienced veteran like this on your side. There's a lot of interesting stories about things down on the bottom. So you have friends that we can talk to, other divers. Yeah. Tell us, uh, like, is there, is there a diving club that you go to? Yeah, there's. A, I haven't been in a while, but the uh, Lake Erie Wreck Divers, also known as Lude, is a group of people that dive you know, Lake Erie, mostly uh, boat owners, and they uh, you know, go looking for wrecks, they dive known wrecks. They'd be some real good resources to talk to because they're always in there and they, they just, that's what they do with their time in the summers. They look for wrecks, dive the ones they know. So these are places that... These are known to wrecks. Totally, totally yeah. and, but totally the Lake Erie Monster. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean you, yeah. it's plenty big enough that it's hiding in there and we would, we, no one would know, really. Yeah. I mean, it's... How big is this wreck? So this wreck is over 100 feet long and uh, it went down close to 100 years ago. It could be a habitat. Could be, well, uh, could be, sure. <laughs> Why not? Uh, there's a, I actually have seen in some of these wrecks a thing called a burbot. Most people aren't aware of a burbot. What is a burbot? I have no idea. It looks like a cross between a fish and an eel. They can get four feet or more. They're really thick around, and they're, they're in this cold, cold water. You know, 39. How do you spell burbot? burbot? Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's B-U-R-B-O-T. Okay. But, um, you know, they're, they're a, just a large fish that really doesn't move. You'll swim up, and if you touch it, it'll take off. But for the most part, they just sit there and ignore you. But sometimes when they're inside a shipwreck, if they start moving around, they kick everything up, and it can get a little bit uh, hairy in there because you're not able to see anymore because of all the silt stirred up. A burbot? I thought I knew the fish in Lake Erie. The yellow perch? The catfish? The bass, but Mike Gowan and the Bourbon have got my mind racing. What other species, ancient or mutated, are down there that we don't know anything about? Going forward, there's no doubt I'll be very grateful for Mike's knowledge and expertise. I don't do boats and I don't do water. Meet Jessica Kennan, sociologist, social worker expert on cryptids, and cosplayer. I'm a cosplayer. What cosplay means is to play on the words costume and play. Um, it started in Japan. It's basically people dressing up as fictional characters from comic books, movies, um, commercials, anything that's pretty much pop culture. It doesn't seem logical to me that all of the people over the past 200 years who have solved the Lake Erie monster are lying. If you're lying to me, I'm gonna know. I have a background in social work and psychology and cram, so I'm interested in how people think and try to figure out or understand the world from their perspective. Do people's eyes play tricks on them? Absolutely. Do people make up stories just to get attention? Definitely. And I can imagine maybe being out there on my boat in Lake Erie, just fishing or doing whatever, 
and then it's dark and I see some lone creature out there, it would creep me out because you don't know what it is. It's not a fish, it's not a person, it's not another boat, it's not a submarine. Because that's the strange thing about the human mind. We're very terrified of something that's a murky image or something that we can't see. Something that's in front of our face isn't as terrifying as something that we have to guess and our mind kind of has to create an image of what it might be. So I think that's part of what makes this 30 feet creature that's in the water terrifying because they don't nobody knows what they're seeing. There is no question in my mind that having someone like Jessica Kennan on the Quest for Bessie team with her unique skill set and personality will prove to be an invaluable asset going forward with our efforts to discover the truth or fiction about the Lake Erie monster. You can get me in a kiddie pool up to my waist, but that's as far as the water could go. With our team now in place, Mike Gowan helps me devise a plan to construct our own Lake Erie monster and get her in the water. You could make a 30 foot monster with, you know, pretty limited um, engineering behind it. You know, it's just be rope and garbage cans and duct tape and a little bit of paint for uh, effect. But yeah, that's awesome. It, yeah. That's better than my idea. Yeah, and you could do, you know, let's say bricks or sandbags or something to make it sink. As long as, you know, and when you first do it on the surface, you know, you have as minimal holes as possible. But it'll, it'll take it a long time actually to fill up with water. So if you just brought it out on the surface, you could see it, and then you could open up, possibly open them up and just throw a few bricks or some lead in there to get, and them, down. To get them down and then get a, a look at what it would look like on the bottom. Yeah, and I could even be on the bottom next to it if you wanted to have a point of reference for the sonar so I could have my gear on and just be down at the bottom right next to it and see how the sonar would compare me to the monster. It's one thing to imagine the Lake Erie monster. It's another thing to actually see it in the field. I'm excited to see what happens when our new Quest for Bessie team springs into action. Today is a big day for me as I'm bringing the Quest for Bessie team to the beach house in Vermilion, Ohio, where I first spotted the Lake Erie monster. I'm hoping to give Mike and Jessica a virtual monster sighting experience as we build our own version of Bessie and get her swimming in Lake Erie. But I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't a little nervous about getting in the water here, given what I have seen and experienced just a few days ago in my boat. Our version of Bessie will measure about 30 feet. Not the 60 feet some have reported, but still, not a sight you're accustomed to seeing in a freshwater lake. Not everyone knows that the Great Lakes are connected to the ocean, and that invasive species have been brought to Lake Erie by ocean-going vessels. Is it impossible to imagine a species that returns to a nesting place every year, even on a journey of a thousand miles? Certainly there are birds and fish species that are known to do so. Perhaps the Lake Erie monster is like-minded. This, this thing is coming together, it's pretty solid. Yeah, duct tape works really good. I used um, duct tape to put my heel together when I was cosplaying and it broke. What? What? Playing? Cosplaying. Dressing up as comic book characters. Oh. Heard. <laughs> you do that? Yes. <laughs> Go to Comic Con and all that? Yes, and apparently I build sea monsters on the weekends. <laughs> Holy cow, I think we're gonna need a bigger boat. Sadly, a rainstorm in the early morning hours has left us with zero visibility in the water, ruling out a dive attempt by Mike Gowan and making our underwater camera virtually useless. Even though I know our monster is only plastic and duct tape, seeing it moving in the water definitely gives you a chill. It's unsettling. Now I'm out here on a boat, and remember I said I almost drowned at a pool party. How are you feeling, Jessica? Like I should not be out here on a boat with monsters after this pool party. <laughs>
crap. But I hear something, and I'm like, what's that sound? And then I look over, next thing I know, Mike just disappears under the water. Something hit him, but I didn't see it. But it was definitely there. Lake Erie is not the ocean. There are no barracudas or sharks. In fact, as far as I know, there are no fish species in it that would knock you down and bite you. I have no explanation for my injury other than the Lake Erie monster. I'm not sure what to think about our day. My hand is definitely bitten. Mike, Jessica, and our camera team heard and saw something. We were unprepared today, but rest assured, the Quest for Bessie team will be back. I'm coming for you, Bessie. There was definitely something in the water that day. There is a monster living in Lake Erie. Perhaps it's a giant sturgeon, or an annual visitor from the ocean, or possibly even a descendant from a prehistoric species. But mark my words, the Quest for Bessie team will find it and bring it home. <laughs>